First, things happen in the world that have to do with tech and gaming and all that. And then second, we tell you about them. I thought we went over this. One more time. Google has been playing games with the internet's hearts concerning Android 11. Last week, a beta site for the developer preview of the OS went live, but was quickly taken down, causing many to think that the site's launch was a mistake. But today, Google just went ahead and launched the preview for Android 11 about a month earlier than expected. And yes, it's Android 11, not R, since Google gave up the whole naming OS versions after desserts thing, because I guess they ran out of desserts. So even though it was so cute, <laughs> and Android Rocky Road is the OS we all wanted, <laughs> Android 11's changes are mostly under the hood right now with updates to networking support, privacy, and platform compatibility. Hopefully though, you'll be able to turn all those up to 11. Compatibility is through the roof! Oh, wow! Ah! I hope this is the last time we have to talk about foldable phones and how much they suck more than we expected. But yeah, they do. Turns out the Galaxy Z Flip's fancy fibers inside the hinge don't actually keep dust out that well at all, as shown by iFix's teardown. And some Motorola Razr users are finding their displays are becoming deformed with weird bumps, and that phone's not even 45 yet. <laughs> but if you want to feel hopeful again, The Verge has a great article about how the Galaxy Z Flip's display is actually glass, despite the questions that have been brought up by Jerry Rig Everything's scratch test. Apparently, pure glass can flex if you just make it super duper thin. Like we're talking 30 microns, which is how thin the Ziflaps, <laughs> Ziflap, Ziflips glass is. That's thinner than an average human hair. And it's even thinner than my, <laughs> thinner than average chicken hair. So Samsung's claim of ultra thin glass is true. Even though on Ziflip, it's covered with a layer of plastic to protect the glass. That sucks, but. And Samsung thinks it's good enough to sell to other companies. So all we can do right now is wait for foldables to get better or just Buy these ones if you're bored and can't figure out what else to do with your riches that you apparently have, you Scrooge McDuck. You could go to space. You could go to space. And it was already impressive when Saber Interactive managed to port the graphically demanding The Witcher 3 to Nintendo Switch. But this week, they outdid themselves all over again. The game's graphics have been tweaked even more with new abilities like adjusting blur and anti-aliasing and a new sharpening filter. Just turn it off. But more importantly, cross save has been added for Steam and good old games. So you can make progress on the PC version, then pick up right where you left off on the Switch. Wow! The Witcher 3 is appropriately the third Switch game to support the feature after Divinity, Original Sin 2, and Civilization 6. And frankly, it should be the norm. And now I'm just upset that it's not already. God. My my day is ruined. Thank goodness the quick bits are here, and to make them even better, they're brought to you by Honey, the shopping tool that finds the best promo codes whenever you shop online. Whatever, wherever. Guys, if you don't know what Honey is, <laughs> it's a free browser extension for Chrome, Firefox, and Safari that saves you time and money, Honey, when shopping online at over 30,000 stores, including Amazon, eBay, Newegg, Razor, Best Buy, and Walmart, and more than that even. Those of you who downloaded Honey from our link have already saved over 100 grand in the past few months alone. And did I mention it's free? Literal no-brainer here. <laughs> I got an empty cranium and I have Honey. You can have it too, free, right now at joinhoney.com slash techlinked. And now, the quick bits call my name. Oh. Stadia has added support for more than just Pixel phones. With the Razer phones one and two, Asus ROG phones one and two, and every Samsung Galaxy phone since the S8 getting official support. So I guess some people now have one less obstacle when Stadia actually gives them a reason to want it. Oh, rude. Zing. A leaked Cinebench result shows Intel's upcoming 10th generation Core i7-10700F matching the performance of AMD's Ryzen 7 3700X, which would be exciting if the Ryzen chip didn't launch last year. And we, we didn't know that by the time Intel actually launches 10th gen, Ryzen would probably have something even better coming out. So don't give up yet. They could still make it cheap. In what is a bit of a modern tech horror story, a reporter for The Guardian was stranded on a remote dirt road after the Prius she rented from car sharing startup Gig lost its cellular connection and shut down. Not scared yet? How about this story where researchers tricked a Tesla into going 85 miles per hour by putting tape on a speed limit sign that read 35. <laughs> sure, Tesla's working on a fix, but it's already incredibly spooky. Oh my. <laughs> Staples is trying to head off the retail apocalypse in its own way, 
by adding podcasting studios to six of its Boston stores. Okay. The studios will be equipped with pro equipment, space for four people, and a price tag of $60 for a 60 minute session. On the one hand, this is actually a cool way to reuse retail space for something useful. But on the other hand, as if we need more podcasts, uh. right? There's, there's literally millions, but Carpool Critics is one of the good ones, so check us out anywhere you get your podcast. Yeah. <laughs> Broadcasting live from Staples. <laughs> And the Jetman team have reached another milestone in Dubai with pilot Vince Reffitt taking off from the ground, hovering in place, and then shooting off to reach a new all-time high altitude using the company's jet-powered wingsuit. What is this? No word on when the suit will be used to fight crime or more, more realistically when Dubai's police will order about 50 of these things. Just go fast. They like to go fast. It's just, all the sand in your face. BYO goggles. And it's time for me to Jetman away because this episode is over, folks. Come back on Friday for more tech news. No promises that we won't be talking about folding phones. Fingers folded. <laughs>